Okay, we're here today on realairculture.com. Today we're with Dr. Clarence Swanton. He was at, he's at the University of Guelph. Welcome today, Dr. Swanton. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Swanton, uh, your research has been demonstrating that corn plants and weeds communicate. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. The, uh, the interesting thing from our, our, our work is um, we think it kind of it changes the way you look at what's happening in the field. And uh, two new things really that, that we're discovering there is that we did realize that plants can actually communicate. You know, we often think of them as being fairly stationary, not moving. And our research is just telling us, and I'm a bit overwhelmed by it myself, is that these plants are responding very quickly to the environment. They're changing very fast. And, and they're changing to environmental signals. One of the environmental signals they get, it's they get they could detect the presence of weeds. Uh, and that is simply light coming in and bouncing off, a certain wavelength coming in, it's the far red that comes in, bounces off the leaf surface, and there are proteins in a corn plant, and this is true in other plants as well, but there are proteins within the plant itself that actually change when that signal is, is picked up. Right. And as a result, so that's, the, they communicate, they communicate through signals. And uh, that, that's kind of a different way of thinking about importance and timing of weed management. So a lot of times when we go out to a field and we, we're thinking about spraying, uh, we think of the weeds in terms of uh, providing competition and taking away moisture. But you even saw, from your presentation, you even saw a change in the leaf orientation in the presence of weeds under, underneath the corn, uh, even if it wasn't drawing from the same moisture source. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. This, what we think is that we don't deny that weeds can rob farmers of water and, and nutrients and light, but we think that there's, that's not the primary action. We think that there's a lot of things that happen before the plant actually experiences that direct competition, and some of those changes that occur actually influence how well they're able to protect themselves from the robbing of light, water, and nutrients from weeds. So based on some of the research that you're seeing, um is, is spraying early become even more important in terms of uh, achieving the, the proper yield that we're looking for? Yeah, we've, we've tried to get out the message about um, spraying early. And if you're going to err in the side of weed management, you want to err on the side of being early. What our data now provides is a scientific basis for the importance. It gives us an understanding of why we think that process is important. It's, you know, there are some growers who want to wait, and they want to wait till the weeds get up or the weeds get to a certain size. And yes, you can do that, but what our data would suggest is that you're changing the yield potential of that crop by the minute, the longer that you wait for those weeds to be controlled. So in your presentation, you talked a little bit about, uh, it's sort of like a step. You never get back onto the same, yeah. you can't catch up. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. That's, uh, uh, how I view how a plant grows. You know, the, the, um, we present the classic case where it's just a continuous increase of biomass and everybody's happy out there, right? And, and uh, what our data suggests is that, that stress can change the growth trajectory of a plant. And every time a plant gets stressed, it actually changes its yield potential. So we start out at the spring with that bag of uh, grain or the bag of corn, whatever, and it's got 100% yield potential in it. And what our data is suggesting that as that plant grows, it grows through the various stresses of the seasons, that yield potential is constantly being chipped away at. And, and we're providing a basically a, a physiological basis to understand how is the plant losing yield? Because that's, that's a question we don't really understand that well. Yeah. So uh, finally, what is one of the biggest misconceptions in your mind that farmers make in terms of uh, uh, weed control and, and, the, and the growth of the corn plant? Well, probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that we, we place value on what the crop looks like at harvest time. You know, you drive the field and you're looking for the clean field, and you say, well, that's a well-managed field. And really what the field looks like at harvest time has nothing to do with the yield potential in that crop, or, you know, it, and so I would suggest to you that really good management is, it shouldn't be judged there. Good management should be just judged early in the spring 
and what does the crop look like very early on because that's when the management has to be intensified. So it changes, I think, the way one would look at successful management. It, it changes the timing when you need to make that assessment of yourself as a farmer or as of your neighbor. You know? Well, Dr. Swan, uh, thank you very much for joining us today, and we look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you very much for having me.